Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lutfi Al-Sharif. I will be talking about a MATLAB Simulink journey-based elevator consumption model. Um, my co-author is Mohammed Al-Ahdab. We are both from the University of Jordan. So the contents of the presentation today, um, I'll give you a very brief overview of what Simulink is, which is part of MATLAB. Um, I'm then going to talk about the um, outline of the Simulink model that is used to uh, generate the energy consumption of an elevator. I'll show you some results. We'll look at some results in detail. Um, and then I will highlight the advantages of using such an approach. And then we'll make some conclusions. So we'll start by uh, taking a general overview of the Simulink uh, model. Simulink is actually part of the well-known uh, package, which is uh, MATLAB, and it's very popular in educational circles. So Simulink is, a, uh, is, is based in MATLAB. It's, uh, it's a graphical programming environment. Ba basically, it's a drag and drop. Uh, so we, we, we drag blocks, pre-programmed, pre-prepared blocks, um, and we drop them into uh, the model. It's used for modeling, uh, simulating, and analyzing uh, multi-domain dynamical systems. Um, its primary uh, interface is a graphical block programming tool and customizable set of block libraries. So the libraries, the blocks in the libraries are customizable. This is what we, we refer to as drag and drop modular interface. So this is the... Um, um, the overview block uh, of the system, and I'm going to try to highlight um, some of the different parts of the system. So um, down here we have, this is the power supply, the three-phase three uh, power source. And as you can see, it is feeding uh, a rectifier. So this is rectifier, and the rectifier is converting the three-phase AC that comes in here, here, and here into um, DC. It is rectified DC, so that's, and that is then fed into um, what we call um, an IGBT inverter. IGBT is insulated gate bipolar transistor, and that will then convert again to AC. And the purpose of these two blocks, so this block and that block, both, the purpose of these two blocks is actually to convert the uh, incoming three-phase AC into an AC output with variable frequency in order to change the speed of the motor. Then we have uh, an induction motor down here uh, at this point. So this is um, an induction motor down here, and that's a three-phase induction motor. Uh, and as you can see, it receives uh, the three phases in, and the output is actually in the form of torque and the torque is then applied to the mechanical load um, after that block. We also have, in this case, we have, this is an important block, which is the speed time profile generator. Um, and for every elevator controller, we will have a speed time profile generator. So speed versus time. It'll, the, the generator will tell us what is the desired speed at each point in time um, that we require the, the lift or the elevator to run at at any one point in time. We also have components that represent the gearbox. So this actually represents part of the gearbox and the sheave. So we've taken into consideration here the diameter of the sheave and the gearbox reduction ratio. And that is important so that we actually can move between the, the high speed shaft of the motor and the linear movement of the elevator car. Um, at this point as well, we have an important block, which is what is called the flux vector controller, and, and that actually uh, will be controlling the, uh, the inverter down here, uh, and in order to control the, um, the system in a closed loop uh, manner. We also have a, a power meter, so this actually will be measuring the power. It's measuring the power that is flowing uh, from the source, from this source to the load down here. So, um, and from this, actually, that is where we get the total energy in kilowatt hours. But we do actually also have outputs 
that show us the energy, the total energy and the power. And the special importance, specific importance is the power that comes out at this point. Um, we have uh, other components represented here. So we here we have the geared hoisting system. Um, here we have uh, the ropes. So that's representing the rope system and the roping the, the mass of the ropes um, and, and so on. Um, this is the scope. The scope is down here at this end. And, the, and on the scope, we can actually see various outputs and variables, as you will see uh, in a minute. Now, uh, what is hidden from us in these blocks, inside each one of these blocks, there's more detail. Um, and that is actually a, a good approach, uh, which is very modular. It encapsulates all the details. So, for example, if we went into one of these models, like the flux vector controller, for example, you will see much more detail about the closed loop speed controller in there. But that's hidden from us at this point. Um, in a real simulink environment, we could double click on that and we could see the details inside and then we can alter those details and the parameters. The other important point in here is you will see, for example, uh, the gearbox reduction ratio and the sheave diameter is hidden inside this block. For example, the mass of the ropes per unit length is hidden inside here uh, and so on. So this gives us a very nice overview of all of the different components of the elevator system and it enables us to change any any one of these components as needed there are in fact eight main components of this model um, the first one is the speed time profile generator and in there would be stored things like the rated speed the rated acceleration the rated jerk and the required distance of that journey and it would actually produce speed against time that will be used in the control of the speed of the elevator. The flux vector controller is important because it's actually controlling the amount of magnetic flux inside uh, the motor and it's actually achieving the closed loop speed control. The rectifier block which converts the incoming AC power supply to DC and then the inverter block, the isolated insulated gate bipolar transistor, which then converts the DC into AC, but at variable frequency, based on the pulses that are received from the flux vector controller. There's the motor block, which is the induction motor, and that actually could be easily made to mirror the real motor induction motor that is used on site. The mechanical system blocks, so there are various blocks like the masses, uh, of ropes and the car and the passengers, the inertias, the rotational components, the flywheels and the sheaves, uh, friction, viscous friction or coulomb friction, the mass of the ropes and so on. So all of the mechanical components will be saved and represented and modeled in this block. The power supply block and the power meter block. Now um, we'll have a look at some of the results that uh, were obtained from uh, running this model in Simulink. So let's have a look at the um, results um, from all the runs. Um, as we can see, the model will be run on a single journey basis. So, um, and, 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 and effectively, this shows that the model is actually uh, built on the micro basis. It's a micro model. So it looks at a time slice by time slice. It produces those results, and then the results will be aggregated to give us an overall journey, and then maybe a daily, and then a yearly um, uh, energy value. We can run the uh, lift, obviously, in the up direction or the down direction. Uh, we can vary the load in the car, the number of passengers, and then it also gives us full flexibility to set all other parameters like counter rate ratio, rope mass, whether there's compensation or not, the efficiency of the various components, the friction, the types of friction and its value, the inertia of the pulleys and the sheave. Um, the following slides will show us some of the results, such as power versus time, actual speed and current waveforms. This slide, for example, it's, it's quite an interesting colorful slide. It shows us the value of the current as the uh, the, the system is starting at the beginning and as you can probably see um, at the beginning here you can uh, at this point you can see that the frequency is low because actually it's a variable frequency drive so as the speed as it starts at a very low speed we can see the three phase currents uh, with their three colors in here at a low frequency and there's a large value of current 
to start with because it's accelerating but then as actually the the frequency increases and the speed increases we can see during this running part of the journey that the frequency is higher which is a higher speed and the value of the current has actually settled and then we see towards the end of the journey you can see that the frequency is dropping again which means that the value the speed is actually dropping um, and then the value of the current for uh, at this point is actually slightly larger and then it stops so this is actually quite a nice um, detailed view of the values of the currents the three phase currents uh, flowing into the motor this is also an interesting slide it's showing us again on a on a, on a micro level um, the value of the power um, at in every um, second or every time slice and we can see as we start accelerating at the beginning the value of power is, is quite large as it, it peaks at around seven kilowatts then it drops and as the elevator is traveling at a constant speed it actually remains constant during this period and then it drops towards the end um, and that gives us power versus time finally this is actually an interesting slide it shows us the speed against time but in fact if you look very carefully uh, especially at this point here and this point here you will notice that there are actually two curves superimposed on each other and this actually is a testament to how well the system has been able to control the speed um, of the of the lift or the elevator so these are the two speeds which you're comparing this is the reference speed the speed that is generated by the uh, speed time profile generator and then superimposed on that is the actual speed uh, of the lift and you can just 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 notice here small uh, deviations from the required speed and this is actually it shows us that there is actually a closed loop control system um, working behind the scenes so we're going to talk in the next slide about the main advantages of this model so let's have a look at the main advantages of this model um, the obvious main advantage is that rather than uh, developing equations and, and putting code into um, a program, the main advantage of this model is that we have blocks and each block represents a component and that component is completely separate from other components mathematically and even graphically. So it's easy to see where everything lies rather than starting to look into equations, pouring over equations to see where uh, each value lies. And this makes it very easy to benefit from pre-designed, pre-prepared blocks, just drag them and drop them. And then you can still adapt those blocks so they are very flexible. So you could uh, drop um, an induction motor model and then vary some of the parameters to suit the actual component that the user is, is using. Uh, we also benefit from the fact that this actually re represents a good dynamic response of the system so it is a closed loop system it actually simulates exactly how the control system is trying to control the speed of the elevator what's also nice about this model it actually works at a micro level as i've mentioned before it's a micro view it's it actually works time slice by time slice um, and it then can give give us the results at the micro level but that can then still be aggregated at the journey, daily or even annual uh, level. And finally, I'm just going to draw some conclusions from the, this presentation. So just to draw some conclusions uh, from this presentation, uh, we've presented a, a component-based approach which is journey-based for generating the energy consumption of an elevator system. Um, it, it was based on Simulink, which al allows us the use of pre-designed, pre-prepared modular blocks that are used in a drag and drop approach. Um, we can still customize these blocks to suit our needs, so that there is still that flexibility. And as I've mentioned earlier, we can use it as a time slice level at a micro level, so we can actually get uh, results at a very very small scale or can still then aggregate them at a larger level and at the end I just want to thank you for your attention and I hope that you've benefited from this presentation thank you very much